U.S. President Joe Biden is in Dublin after visiting Northern Ireland for the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. Another batch of leaked Pentagon documents suggest that the U.S. may have spied on the head of the United Nations. The MEP Eva Kaili, the only one of the five people originally charged by the corruption scandal in the European Parliament still in prison, will be released soon. The rain welcomed Joe Biden to Dublin for a presidential trip full of nostalgia. Upon landing, the U.S. president visited a hangar where he was greeted by U.S. embassy officials and their families, many with young children. After having a brief conversation with them, the U.S. president headed for Collingford Castle. Question their judgment, whether they're right or wrong. Biden is using the official visit to also soak up the history of his ancestors. Ten of his 16 great-great-grandparents were from Ireland before moving to the United States during the Great Famine of the 19th century. The visit will conclude on Friday. Before arriving in Dublin, Biden visited Northern Ireland for the 25th anniversary of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, which put an end to decades of conflict that killed more than 3,000 people. But recent political turmoil has left Northern Ireland without a functioning government, rattling the foundations of the U.S. broker deal. Thank you so much. We're moving. We're moving. The latest leaked revelations, which have sent U.S. officials at the Pentagon into damage control mode, involve the United Nations Secretary General. They suggest that the White House believes Antonio Guterres is too willing to accommodate Russian interests. The leaked document focuses on the Black Sea grain deal, brokered by the U.N. and Turkey in July, amid fears of a global food crisis. It suggests that Guterres was willing to promote Russia's ability to export, despite involving sanctioned individuals, as long as Ukraine could get its grain out to the world. Much of the leaked information in the last few days has concerned the Ukraine war. The classified documents range from briefing slides mapping out Ukrainian military positions to international support for the country. It's feared the leaks could affect Ukraine's plan for a counteroffensive. Я сподіваюся, що наші американські колеги зрозуміють, побачать ті помилки, які були допущені при цьому. З точки зору того, що там було викладено, ну знову ж це ж ми не все, це те, що нам, на жаль, дає медіа побачити. Є окремі моменти, але з точки зору демотивації, ну, нічого не змінюється. Все залишилось, як і є, і нам потрібно відвоювати нашу землю. Тобто... Я вірю в Джо Байдену цілковито. Я знаю, що ця людина надзвичайно досвідчена і дуже любить Україну. І я впевнена, що все буде ще краще. The Pentagon has begun its own internal investigation into the source of the leak, but is playing down concerns it could erode U.S. allies' trust in sharing information in the future. January to March was the deadliest first quarter since 2017 for migrants crossing the Mediterranean. In just the first three months of 2023, at least 441 people died, crossing what has been described as the most dangerous maritime route in the world. Around half of those deaths, according to the UN, are because of delays in state-run rescue efforts and obstacles to NGO search and rescue attempts. But the International Organization for Migration argues that their figure is most likely an undercount because of so-called invisible shipwrecks, or cases where accidents are only known because the boats have been reported missing. At least 20,000 people have died trying to cross the body of water since 2014. Italy declared a state of emergency on Tuesday because of the high number of people arriving by sea, with more than 31,000 migrants arriving in the country since the beginning of 2023, a figure that is four times higher than the same period last year. The European Parliament has held its first intercommittee meeting with Ukraine, one of the vital steps for the country to join the bloc. European Parliament President Roberta Mazzola said that the accession negotiations should start this year, but that there is still a lot of work for Kyiv to do. 
In a nutshell, all our institutions' resources will be available at your disposal. Now, of course, we know the process will not be easy. As representatives of the people, you have the role and responsibility to explain to Ukrainian citizens the need for reforms, often far-reaching and painful, even more in times of war. In June, the European Union granted Ukraine candidate status, putting it on the path to become a member of the bloc. An EU Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, offered to fast-track the process. Kyiv says that it wants to become a member in just two years. Kherson is Ukraine. This graffiti appeared on a fence in the Ukrainian city of Kherson after the Russian forces occupied the town. The yellow ribbon painted there soon became a symbol of the civil resistance of the Ukrainians living in the occupied territories. Now, supporters of the movement visited Brussels and opened an exhibition there about their work. Thank you very much, Valeria, for your courage. Жовта стрічка – це рух опору на окупованих територіях. Це мирний рух опору. Ми нагадуємо людям про те, що вони досі в Україні, про те, що, те, що там, росіяни кажуть, що тут Росія назавжди – це неправда. Про те, що їх ніхто не кинув, ми всі разом з ними. А також проводить інформ... жовта стрічка проводить інформаційну кампанію з приводу проблем на окупованих територіях, таких як паспортизація, мобілізація у їх війська. Але в основному ось це підтримка, і ми показуємо людям, що вони не одні. Now the movement has more than 8,000 members. They are trying to help those left on the Russian side of the front line with information. And where their sign appears, people know that Ukraine did not forget them. We need more financial support to um, the people of Ukraine, uh, including civil society uh, representatives, giving them a chance to uh, obtain more channels to communicate and to extend their action in uh, those territories which are still inaccessible by, uh, for, for Kyiv. But, uh, you know, um, solidarity and political uh, support, I think sometimes it's even more important than financial one. The message of the exhibition is that Ukraine does not agree with the occupation. They hope, once Ukraine liberates the occupied territories, the life of the people will come back to normal step by step. The Greek MEP Eva Kaili caught up in the European Parliament corruption scandal will be released from prison after more than four months in custody. The former Parliament vice president will return home under electronic surveillance. Since the corruption scandal erupted last December, out of the five people originally charged, only Kaili remains in prison in Belgium. Even her partner, Francesco Giorgi, is out under an electronic tag. The former MEP accused of masterminding the scandal, Pier Antonio Panzeri, and the Belgian MEP, Marc Tarabella, have also been granted release. The 44-year-old lawmaker Kylie was charged with participation in a criminal organization, corruption and money laundering, following a cash-for-favor scheme that involved large sums of money allegedly paid out by Qatar and Morocco in order to influence European policymaking. The two countries deny all accusations. According to her lawyer, she continues to maintain her innocence. The European path advocated by the French president regarding Taiwan raised controversy. Emmanuel Macron calls on the Union not to show followership towards the United States or China on this issue. For some, these remarks made after his trip to Beijing are dangerous because they could crack European unity and transatlantic solidarity when it comes to Beijing. However, not all observers denounce the strategic autonomy defended by Paris. President Macron has for several years now uh, repeatedly emphasized his view that 
Europe should develop what he calls strategic autonomy. And I think depending on what you want to see in that concept, different people see different things. Uh, for my own part, I, I don't see that as a threat to US, uh, to transatlantic unity at all. I think that there's plenty of people in the United States who would uh, support the idea that Europe should do more to be a strategic actor in its own right. And Europe stepping up to do more, especially in light of the threats, uh, both proximate and global in today's era would be a good thing. Dan Baer also points out that certain elements of the analysis presented by the Commission President resonate in Washington. For example, Ursula von der Leyen spoke of the need to preserve the status quo in the Taiwan Strait. However, just after the visit of the European leaders, Beijing conducted a military exercise to encircle the island. In this context, the idea of a European third way seems very difficult because the security of the Union depends on the United States. We should follow the U.S. as far as in our interests, but it's, it's obvious that our values and our interests are not the same of the U.S., but are closer to the U.S. than to China. You know, so uh, I don't think that we should just blindly follow the U.S. But talking about neutrality or a key distance here, I think is 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 not very realistic because neither our values or our interests are a key distance from Washington and, and Beijing. For the EU, the priority remains to keep the channels open with Beijing. The head of European diplomacy was supposed to go to China this week, but his trip has been cancelled due to COVID-19.